The angle of your bindings and how wide you set them apart is what the snowboard community refers to as your snowboard stance. While your snowboard stance is subjective, in this video, I'm going to give you a guideline to help you get as close as possible to setting up the perfect stance. Now, understand that you may need to adjust your stance based on your equipment, your riding style, conditions, personal preference, skills, pain, or nagging injury. By the end of the video, I'm going to give you a better understanding of how to find the stance and determine exactly what you're with and binding angles are. And as a special bonus, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you what my stance is and I'm going to reveal exactly why. I set up my stance the way I do. And again, this video is a guide to help you with your stance. It's not going to be a perfect formula, but it's going to be a guide. So you're definitely going to have to do ex some experimenting to find that perfect stance. Before diving into the width of our bindings, we first need to set up our angles that are going to most complement our riding style. And the very first style that we're going to break down is going to be freestyle. When it comes to a freestyle setup, traditionally, you're going to want more of a duck stance. Duck simply means you have positive angle in the front foot and negative ang angle in the back foot. This allows for more rotation in the hips as well as range of motion vertically, which is going to be super useful for doing tricks, spins, rails, or having a lot more creative freedom with your body and your board. Now it's not required to have a symmetrical duck stance, but when it comes to freestyle, I love a symmetrical stance so that it theoretically feels the same whether I'm riding my dominant direction or I'm riding switch. In reality, it's not perfectly symmetrical feeling, but that is at least the goal. And the recommended freestyle stance is gonna be positive 15 in the front foot, negative 15 in the back foot, or positive 12 and negative 12. And you can obviously play around with that back foot and move it around as needed. This freestyle stance is normally paired with a true twin camber, a directional twin camber, or a hybrid board. Let's move on to a carving specific stance. When it comes to carving, yes, you can absolutely carve in a duck stance, but if it's your primary style of riding, you want a stance to complement that, and I suggest going positive in the front foot and positive in the back foot. This is also known as a posi posi stance. The benefits of having a posi posi stance is it allows you to get more board control when carving, having more power put into your board while carving, as well as getting a significant more amount of tilt in your body so you can lay down some super awesome carves. A recommended posi posi stance for carving is going to be positive 30 in the front foot and positive 15 in the back foot. And the recommended carving board to pair with this stance is going to be a directional board, a directional twin, or an alpine racing board. And I definitely suggest to use camber if you're trying to maximize the performance out of this style of riding. Now let's dive into a all mountain snowboard stance. If you're trying to attack the mountain, you're going to need a stance that is versatile and adaptable to all sorts of conditions, speed, and terrain. This stance could have a carving or freestyle influence based on what you want. A recommended stance for all mountain with a little bit more of a carving bias is going to be positive 15 in the front foot and either zero or three degrees in the back foot. And a all mountain freestyle setup, I suggest having positive 15 in the front foot and you can go minus six, nine, 12 or 15 in the back foot. You could also do a 12 degree positive angle on the front foot and also pair it with a 6, 9, or 12 in the back. Again, personal preference. With this kind of riding, I would definitely lean towards a true twin camber or a directional twin camber or a directional camber board. And for you powder riders out there, you have a few different options for stance, but the goal is to have a stance that allows the nose of the board to float while having the ability to make an array of turn shapes and sizes. When setting up your stance, you may shift your bindings back to apply more pressure to the tail helping the nodes of the board stay afloat. This is commonly known as a setback where you're no longer center in your board, but you favor your tail. This setback can be determined by the board you have, the angle of the slope, and the amount of snow, but traditionally you can set back between one and three inches. The recommended stance for this, if you have more of a free ride, is going to be positive 15 in the front foot, 
and something around zero, three, or six in the back foot. If you're more of a freestyle, then you may want to try a positive 12, negative 12, or positive 15, negative 15, and obviously consider having that setback. This stance is normally paired with a directional, directional twin, hybrid, or reverse camber board. And definitely stay to the end because I'm going to tell you exactly what stance I have and why I ride camber in POW slash never change my setup ever. Future Tommy here. I want to talk about a couple things to know when setting up your bindings. And first, let's start with the base plate. This piece of plastic right here, traditionally, it's going to be removable. This piece of plastic is called your base plate. And when you change your angles, you have these little notches so you can like lift up and move it a little bit. It's going to move in increments of three degrees. So the Burton cartels that I have here, they go from zero, nine, and 18 as far as markings, but there's little notches in between. So you're making a three degree jump. Another thing to note is that there's a bunch of different patterns on this whole, uh, this base plate. So I could use this base plate on a four traditional whole board instead of the channel system, but I could also use the channel system. Another thing to note is that I don't necessarily want to be toe heavy or super heel heavy. What I do want to be is as center and centered as possible. So I actually, instead of setting up my the board with like this top hole, I'm actually going to go here, allowing the bindings to shift forward just a little bit so that I don't have any heel side or toe side drag or heel or toe drag because I definitely don't want that. Another thing that when I'm setting these up, I love to try to find the holes and try to set them up and then just know, am I going in the right direction, right? Sometimes it's really easy for us just to accidentally be in the wrong direction or we have negative angle on our front foot, which could not be awesome. So I like to just, you know, create the angle. I'll like change this to whatever angle this is and I'll just try to set this up. Okay, cool. I got to move this. And if I go in this direction, oh, I noticed that it's wrong. So I'm not fully committed. So I'll actually just double check that, make sure I'm going in the right direction. Obviously, and this happens to the best of us, make sure that your ratchet straps are towards the tip of the board because sometimes it's easy for us to have them on the wrong foot and then you've set up your bindings wrong. So when setting up bindings, definitely want the ratchet towards the tip or the ratchet, these ratchets right here towards the tail. And another awesome tip for when you're actually mounting your bindings, I like to get one bolt started and then get it so it has a little bit of bite, but I'm not going to crank down just one because it might actually mess up your angles or mess up how it sits, um, connects to the board. So I would definitely like screw this one in a little bit and then go to this one, make this one a little bit tighter so that they're actually going down pretty close, like at the same um, amount of force. And then I just keep going back and forth a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter. And if you're using a four bolt system, and then I would do that in a star format so that you're always going in like a crisscross pattern instead of just locking one down. Uh, that was a big issue. A lot of people have is they'll just tighten one down and then the other four or other three screws don't actually line up. So just do small increments and then tighten it all the way down at the end. I am a big fan of getting these pretty tight but I don't want to overly tight it, but give it a nice little elbow grease, get there, make sure it's tight. Cause I obviously don't want to be slipping and slipping and slipping and I'll make sure it's tight. Go back through, check it again, make sure it's tight. That's pretty good. Move it to this one, verify, cool. And then I'm locked and loaded. All right, let's keep going. Now you have all this information that's gonna help you set up your angles that are best gonna complement your riding style, but also understand that you can change your stance based on the conditions, your riding style, or even how you're feeling. Now let's dive into how we determined our width but first, how the heck do we measure our width? When measuring your bindings, you want to start from your lead binding and you're going to measure from the very center of the base plate and then just stretch out the tape measure, whatever you're measuring with, to the center of the other plate. This is going to be your stance width and the best part is as your angles change, the center never moves, so you're going to have an accurate measurement. Things to consider when you're setting up the width. We are trying to find the balance of feeling and function. Of course, we want to be explosive, have full range of motion, be able to go forward, backwards, toe side, heel side, but we want to be able to perform all of that while being pain-free and of course, comfortable. 
You also have the option of making a super wide stance and the benefit would be more balance but less range of motion. You can go super narrow which is going to make it a lot more nimble especially for rail riders but you may not have that versatility when riding off piece terrain. So I personally like setting up a stance that's going to favor the midsole allowing me to have great range of motion, agility as well as balance. Before we go through a couple different exercises, I suggest grabbing a pen, a paper, or something to take some notes on, and of course you're going to need a tape measure. Now we're going to go through a couple different exercises, and some are super awesome, and some are less awesome, but I recommend going through all of those and trying to determine the average of all of these exercises so that we can closely get to that perfect stance. And also, as a little asterisk, at the end of the day, you're going to have to experiment with different stances on hill. So I definitely recommend having a snowboard tool in your pocket so you can easily change that anytime. I'll link my favorite snowboard tool down below. First, we're going to start with a basic squat exercise. Now get into your classic athletic position, but make it slightly more narrow. Perform one to three squats, and on the final squat, go ahead and move your stance a width wider and repeat up to five times. Here, you're going to find which one feels the most comfortable, both in your range of motion and how much impingement you may feel in your hip. The goal is to find a stance that feels comfortable. Definitely make sure you measure this out and you may need some chalk to make this a little bit easier. This next way to find your stance, we're going to grab your snowboard and we're going to try to find the reference. Essentially, when you buy a snowboard, there's going to be a part, an indicator on the board for a reference. This indicates where the center is usually or a setback, but it's going to tell you where it suggests you should put your bindings. Now, the challenge here is it's obviously not taking into consideration your height, your width or your riding style, but it's a great place to start. And on these boards, like the Burton that I'm riding, it has these little mountain peaks and it's a half inch marker. So I actually don't need a measuring tape. I know I can move a half inch. Next is called the drop test. Find something about one to two feet off of the ground and the goal is to jump into an athletic position and absorb the impact. Perform this drill three times while measuring your landing position. This is a super common drill, but I'm not the biggest fan because I find that this landing position could be inconsistent, but your results may vary. The next exercise is also another fun one. It's called the jump test. Essentially, you're going to close your eyes and with that said, make sure you look around, there's nothing dangerous or hazardous, and you're going to jump five times with your eyes closed, and every time you land, try to absorb the impact. Now you're trying to find a stance that is the most comfortable and strong with your eyes closed, so definitely feel this drill as much as you can. On the last jump, stay there, open your eyes, and measure your feet and see what your stance is. Again, this drill is commonly used. I find it to be a bit inconsistent, but you may have better results than I do. This next drill, even though it's not a drill, is my favorite. What you're gonna do is measure from the bottom of your foot with your shoe off, measure the length of your leg to the top of your knee. This is gonna give you a pretty close estimate of what your stance could be. Personally, I find this to be about three quarters inch short, but a really good starting place. This last exercise is by far my favorite, but could be the most subjective and possibly the most frustrating or time consuming. What you're gonna do is gather all of the data from the drills that you've done beforehand, and you're gonna determine a range of which you think is gonna be most appropriate. It should not be 10 inches difference, should just be a little range. And then you're gonna find one of the longest runs that you can find, and you're gonna ride that same run three times and try to do the exact same turns same areas, same bumps, same tricks, same jumps, and then change your stance just a little bit. I'm a big fan of the Burton channel system because I can change that stance by a millimeter at a time effortlessly without pulling the bindings off and having to work too hard. You can do the little slidey thing pretty easily. With this said, yes, it's going to take a lot of time, but once you determine your perfect stance, awesome. Two things you can do with that. Take notes, put notes in your, your phone or 
glue them to your refrigerator. But the other thing that you can do is grab a marker and trace your bindings. So if you ever take your bindings off, whether you're waxing your board or you're changing your setup, that you have your reference and you just know what it is at all times. So obviously that's going to be the most subjective, but my goal is for you to find a stance that is the most explosive, most powerful, most balance and most comfort so that you can literally have a stance that complements your riding and you can ride all day. Now let's break down my stance, but first I'm 5'5 and 140 pounds. I primarily ride big jumps, love freestyle, love going fast, carving, and just trying to handle anything I throw at my board or my body. So I want a stance that is as versatile as possible. So I am going to be a dock stance. So I have positive 15 in my front foot, negative 15 in my back foot, and I'm 20 and three quarter inches wide in my stance. I also really love having just one setup. So I love camber snowboards. I have a seven out of 10 flex on this Burton Blossom. Extremely stoked on true twin cambers. I want it to feel as symmetrical as possible. I also just love having one setup and never changing my binding angles because I would rather develop my skills, body positions on something familiar so that I can just work on myself. I don't like having to constantly adjust and adapt and adjust and adapt, but I also spent years and years and years and years and years determining what my width and angles are. And sometimes it won't feel right. I'll make small adjustments, but as much as I can, I keep the same stance. I also went to Japan and rode a gnarly amount of POW, but I ended up keeping my same exact stance because I wanted to be able to ride switch, do tricks, 360s, 540s, all that stuff. But I also wanted a stance slash board setup that could handle the gnarly chop. Now, let's be realistic here. First, one, two, three, four runs of the day, super sick powder. In Japan, the, the snow is super fluffy and light, so you're not having to actually have a super um, like reverse camber or a super like powder board. I was literally riding like some mellow terrain in 18 inches of power just fine because the condition, conditions there, favorite. But after three runs, it's super choppy and gnarly. So if I had something that had zero tail, I had something that had a big nose, but it was reverse camber, I felt like I would only be good for three runs. Well, I want to have the sickest day ever in the entire day. So I would end up just riding a camber board and then charging through the chunder and gnarly like Little, little goat trails everywhere. So I definitely love just having the same setup every day. You literally see me wherever I'm riding, y'all just be on a camber snowboard, like freaking love it. And with that said, let me know down in the comments below if I missed anything, you agree, disagree, or I gotta add something because my goal is to make you as awesome as possible at snowboarding and definitely put your post notifications on because we do a bunch of fun giveaways. We're also doing live streams. We're doing all sorts of fun stuff. So definitely be a part of the community. And if you're looking for friends, check out the Discord link down below. That is going to be a great way to make friends, vibe with people. Also, if you're interested in getting hoodies or goggles, I got some awesome goggles right here. Check out shopbenetech.com. This literally has a fog-free guarantee. This thing is incredible. Love these goggles. They also are magnetic. So you're definitely going to be vibing no matter what. And it comes with two lenses, so you can't go wrong there. On that note, you're amazing. Love you. Bye.